Hello, everyone. This is Karen Roy with another episode of Life Possible with a Disability. Um, it is my pleasure to have my best wheel friend back again on a very important topic. So, um, and then I will also say, if you are listening to the show and you like what you hear, please go in and like, subscribe on the YouTube channel is Karen Roy. Um, on most podcast forms that you can listen to, it would be Life Possible with a Disability um, podcast. And um, if you could go in and like and subscribe or write um, something, that would be great. So Barb was episode five and we taught, we had really exciting news then. So um, a little backstory, um, I would definitely say go back and listen to episode five, but we met at the Miss Wheelchair America competition for the t- title of 2019. Um, our our friendship is well documented on social media um, from the moment that we met all the way through to, um, to today because um, we clicked in that moment and it never will never end. So, um, so she was Miss Wiltshire, Pennsylvania, 2018. I was Miss Wiltshire, Louisiana, 2018. And, um, that's how our journeys have, uh, intertwined, intertwined in the most beautiful way. So, um, so Barb fast forward, <clears throat> excuse me, had she's been involved in advocacy. She's done some crazy, amazing things. She's, she's all over the place, um, with, a like a UPMC model spokesperson on all the commercials. If you're in Pennsylvania, you see her beautiful face all over the place. Um, she does tons of, she runs the most amazing, um, part of the Miss Wheelchair America organization. So she runs state coordinator for Miss Wheelchair Pennsylvania. I was head judge this last year and a A lot of work, (laughs) a, a lot of work, but you can tell. Um, and, then, so she um, was a shopper at Torrid, and she found out about a, a media campaign that they were doing, like a social media campaign, where women um, could um, try to, I guess, compete to get the most votes online to become a Torrid model, to go to do this huge photo shoot in LA. And so she was like, oh my gosh, like all about representation of people with disabilities in all over the place. Right. I mean, um, we don't see ourselves in, in ads very often and it's gotten better, but by far, like with the number of people who live with disabilities versus what you see on TV, um, or social media, we're not accurately represented. Mm -hmm. So Barb, um, and, and like, she just starts creating her own stuff. Like she's in, gosh, anything she wants to do, she can just, she just, teaches herself and she does the most amazing job. So she starts this whole like media campaign, um, uh, getting votes for the Torrid, uh, model competition. And, you know, she engaged the, the disability community and especially the wheelchair user community. Um, and she won one of the slots to get to LA. And so that's kind of where we were, um, with episode five, you had not yet gone to LA and experienced all of that. And then all the really amazing things that have come as a result of that. So without further ado, um, here's Barb to tell us part two of, of the Torrid model story. (laughs) Yes. So pretty much like Karen said, um, there was, it was, a torrid model casting of their like customers and what's funny is i went into the store and the store like the store manager was like oh you know like explain to me why something was accessible because i was like i don't get it and then i was like okay great now when are we am i going to see someone like me up on the walls and that's when she told me about the competition so torrid in-house they chose out of seven thousand applicants <sighs> they chose 30 girls to go and essentially go for like a shopping spree, get clothes, model them and do a social media campaign. Mm -hmm. And I was the only disabled one chosen out of Mm -hmm. 7,000 applicants. I was told that there were more wheelchair users that did apply. Um, So I was chosen as that representation. And then, um, yeah, I won top 10 and um, I forgot about that. I forgot it was like a two part thing. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was like a two month long adventure to just get to the point of knowing I won. Um, So 
then at the end of August, um, I ended up flying out to LA. My brother went with me because I do not trust airlines um, handling my body at all. Um, or our wheelchairs. But Yeah, I have no choice. Like he can't do much with that, right? But like right, he yeah. at least can help me transfer to make sure I don't break a leg um, in the process because people just don't understand legs break easy um, when you can't move them. Yeah. So yeah. Um, you know, and he was there to help me with other things that I may need that aren't accessible. And thankfully he was there. Um, so they ended up paying for him to go, um, as well. So that was awesome on their behalf to, you know, think of that accommodation. Caregiver. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of times they don't think of the companion or attendant or whoever, then it comes out of our pockets as a disabled person. Um, you know, just because the environment's not accessible. Right. So, um, that's, that's kind of a barrier right there, mm -hmm. but yeah. thankfully they thought of that. So, um, they, they covered that and they put him in his own room and everything. So it was nice. Um, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. And the hotel room was fabulous. They had us in, um, I dealt with so many barriers once I got out there, um, because it seemed to me that Torrid has never worked with a disabled person before ever or had a conversation <laughs> with them. And so, um, they, I, it seemed that they would like hire outside entities to, you know, complete a task like contract out mm -hmm. and these entities would be like, Oh yeah, we're accessible. Yeah, we did that. And they took them at their word. And as a disabled person, everyone here knows to not take people at their words and to like mm -hmm. give them the, 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 the 20 questions um, yep. to verify it nonstop. Yep. So apparently they just took them at their word <laughs> and that's why everything ended yeah. up. Welcome right. to our world. <laughs> exactly. And you know, then they put it on us. Like we didn't like do enough, even though we called nonstop, like, you know, like you said, mm -hmm. the one time you went to check into a hotel and they're like, well, you should have called. You're like, yeah, after 34 years of paralyzed, I don't know what I need. You're right. 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 right, right. Yeah. I forgot. I totally forgot to do that. Yeah. Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> right. I was like, yeah. Like, that's you didn't true. ask for accessibility. Uh, silly me. <laughs> You're right. I forgot I, just, I was paralyzed. Yeah. I just would assume that you would know what I need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much, um, you know, once we got out there, it was the 10 of us girls. Um, again, I was the only disabled person. I could tell that the other girls have also never been around someone with a disability. So it was definitely a learning curve for them as well and how to interact, I guess, with me and everything and what my needs were. And I bonded with some girls more than others, kind of like Miss Wheelchair America, you know, mm -hmm. and um, we did not start shooting until pretty much the end of the week. Um, the beginning part of the week was like, um, ta like they have tailors there, right? Yes. So like, I'm going to give away all the secrets of it. It's also crazy. Um, That's kind of cool behind the scenes of a commercial. Yeah. Like, yeah. so when you see those pictures, like in stores and stuff, the reason why those clothes look so great and flawless on everyone is because they, they tailor the clothes down to custom fit the model. Now, not saying that they don't have, like, it's always going to be that way, but yeah. the problem is they get samples in and the samples only come in like three different sizes, mm -hmm. but they may offer like 20 sizes, right? Mm -hmm. But they only have these. So they get the bigger size and tailor it down to you. Yeah. So it's not, they just don't have a large amount to choose from. Yeah. So that's pretty much what it is, but they like are literally they designed jeans that were custom for me sitting. You and came I home never... with a custom set of clothing. Yeah, I have them actually right here. Hold on. Awesome. I'll show y'all how crazy this is. Because so... we, I'll tell you, like, a lot of, we, well, as a wheelchair user, every time I try to put a cute pair of blue jeans on, my butt crack shows because yes. you're, yeah. And so. that's what happens. And so they ended up, I don't know if you can see here. The extra material yeah, up so the back. Wow. Took another pair of jeans and sewed it on. So like I'm sitting on the, yes. the, these pockets, but these pockets I can actually use. Wow. So they actually sewed like they called it a gusset um, mm -hmm. up the back. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of, you know, connected wow. it all. So I was like, that's pretty awesome. 
Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's definitely something like I never even thought twice about, like that they would be tailoring clothes, right? To make it look good on my body. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, but where they had me transfer to, to be able to get dressed um, was not accessible and was only eight inches off of the ground. So I could get on, but me getting up, I was not going to blow out my shoulders because they didn't listen to me. Mm -hmm. Um, Could I have done it? Probably. But again, I probably would have blown out my shoulders because I have bad shoulders. So Mm -hmm. I've been trying very hard to make sure I keep up my shoulder integrity. Super important. I'm I'm only 14 years into this. I still have like, you know, a long time to go. Long time. Yeah. I don't need to damage shoulders anymore. But anyways, um, so thankfully my brother was there for that and was able to help assist them um, with finding more or less a transition point for the transfer. So like, it's not from like this eight inch sofa sucking me down into my chair up here. There was a spot in between the transfer and I use a transfer board. So I was able to, you know, kind of transfer up onto that transition point with a little bit of assistance from him then. So, um, I was able to pretty much do that. Um, and then as a result, um, I advocated for myself and they, I was like, well, you know, if this is how it's going to be when we do our photo shoots, I cannot like do this like multiple times a day. Right. Like you need to like put it up on blocks. I told you I needed a transfer height of 21 plus or minus an inch. Yes. Like 21 yes. inches plus or minus an inch. You I weren't know joking. I yeah. And you weren't, yeah. you weren't, it wasn't a suggestion. It was, no. this is what I need. Yes. And I feel like they thought like, oh, she's being a diva or something like, and I was like, no, like this is, I'm trying to make you look good Mm -hmm. by giving you a heads up ahead Mm -hmm. of time. But they apparently missed the memo and the mark with that. And then, um, the one girl, she was, um, part of the whole team toward insider, like the people on the inside. And she ended up having someone build like, um, a platform to raise like a chaise lounge essentially mm. for me to transfer on and be able to easily get dressed on like get jeans on because you know as well as i do i would like to see any person get a pair of jeans on without being able to stand up Let right me- yeah 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 exactly and, and just it's yeah you're gonna be fighting and again why it's and- part of why i don't i mean just yeah i i don't fight the fight it's not worth the energy and i just yeah. do skirts and dresses <laughs> that that's what works for me and yeah and i'm like yep i'll just do my leggings and mm-hmm. i'm good like but mm-hmm. it just it definitely is something that um you know i was like all right and then whenever that happened i was like listen you guys have to do something and then they're like oh well you know you guys need to or you're gonna have your own dressing room off to the side you know it's your special barb and you and i was like no, 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 right. no, 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 no. Segregating me. Yeah. So I was, and that's what I said. I was like, y'all are literally segregating me this whole time. And so once I like explained it to them and advocated about it and explained that perspective, I don't think that it even dawned on them that like wheelchair users are even like segregated, right? They look at it as, oh, we're being, you're getting special treatment. Yay. Like we're doing something. And so, um, yeah, that's so true. Like you can, they can try to put a positive spin on it, but when you are separated from the group and you're sitting there alone, um, you mm-hmm. can say whatever nice things you want to about that, but that you're isolating us. It's like, um, yeah. It's kind of like, okay. So once I explained it all to them, they were like, okay. And they did go and fix everything at that point um, that I felt like was issues within mm-hmm. the whole um, experience. It's so- really good that you are at a point. Cause I know for many years after my disability, I was, I would try to be, I, I didn't want to be a bother. I mm-hmm. would do things that were really difficult for me to make it easier for everyone else. And then you finally get to the point where you're like, wait, wait a minute. Like, you know, I think, I think like me literally learning, like, I feel like old bar before Miss wheelchair, Pennsylvania, America would have been that way. Um, but I feel like something just changed when you're at nationals and you kind of actually realize that, no, these are our rights. 
and you just get empowered and it's like no i'm not giving up these are my rights like and, <laughs> and everyone's like people need to enforce the ada and i'm and i i think that we're the ones who are supposed to enforce the ada mm -hmm. like yeah. that's what i think really is the thing here and it's bizarre so um <laughs> yeah no it's uh, um, um yeah i just blew my son a kiss goodbye um so um yeah i uh it's it's a new mindset um when you stop and you know like this whole medical accessibility issue too it's the same thing it's like i've just made it work and brought extra people and gotten lifted up and done things that were unsafe to make it easy on everyone else like why why did i do that like why didn't i demand a table that was accessible for me. And, you know, yep. I, I think if we have any advice for younger advocates or wheelchair users, it's like, start that sooner rather than later, like get comfortable in your own skin and then understand your value. You are just as valuable as anyone else. And that this is, this is 2021 slash 22 people like, and another thing, I'm sure you've heard this before. I'll go into a place and I'll advocate saying, this is not right. This isn't accessible. This isn't. And they're like, well, we've had other wheelchair users in here and they never said anything. So I don't know what your problem is. And it's like, because I know all those other wheelchair users are keeping their mouth shut mm -hmm. and just dealing with it. Right. And going, they're, they're just dealing and trying to. Yep. There's to that part. And then also everyone's disability is different. Maybe those people could actually stand and they only use yep. a wheelchair part of the, you know, do you it's not apples to apples number yeah, one and number yeah when you're non-ambulatory it's a whole nother ball game like yeah it's, we talked about that the other day where people are like you know if you can do a stand pivot transfer oh what would we give for a stand pivot transfer i, I mean you know anything for just a stand and pit like just to be able to stand even for like three seconds yeah 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 and can you I imagine guess, like <laughs> even like even with some assistance and i could pull up pants yeah yeah it's a thing it's man it's, it is yeah i'm like so oh, it sounds what? like the the recap of tour it is mistakes were made and they didn't 100% yes. listen to you but that then once you advocated for yourself they stepped up and tried yes. to do the right thing yes they totally fixed it all um they also had plans of doing a photo shoot up on the roof um, and I was like, oh, is there accessibility to the roof? No. I'm like, well, how are we going to get up there? We'll figure it out. Now that's able body speak. Uh -huh. that, like, we're going to carry you up. And I'm like, yeah, no. Potentially only, drop you. Yeah. Yeah. And the only way you're going to carry me up is if you carry the other nine girls up because that's equity, right? Like, <laughs> right, right. If you do that, right. then let you. But right. no. So <laughs> ended up changing the location. They ended up changing everything once I advocated. So like if anything from all this, if anyone's listening, just remember to always advocate for yourself. If something is making you feel a certain way, no one's going to know that unless if you speak up. Like these people had no clue and I don't think they were doing it to be malicious by any yeah. means. Most they of the time just, not. They just never have been around someone with a disability and worked with someone with a disability or a disability such as mine that mm -hmm. may be a little bit more severe than someone else they may have worked with. So, you know, they, they had no clue. And the only way they're going to know is if I tell them about it. Right. So, you know, I can't mm -hmm. really fault people for not knowing what they don't know. Right. I can fault it's how they, yeah. Now, yeah. It's know? how they, and then it's how they, you know, actions speak louder than words. So show yes. me. Um, so is a change behavior. Wait, say that again. Your best apology is a changed behavior. Yeah, exactly. Like you can say so, you're sorry all day long. It doesn't fix it. Exactly. Um, so, so I was in Memphis a little, up, you know, month and a half, month or so ago, and I was in this like outdoor shopping area. And I don't, I don't see the Torrid in Baton Rouge that much, but I'm like, oh my god, that's Torrid. So I'm like, Jason, and we got to go over there. So I went over, and then because. In the store, if you're, if we are listening to this in December of um, 2021, the no campaign, huh? It's no longer in stores. It's not. They took it out. Oh, already. well, it's online. Well, so never mind. It's not in the store right now. But I went into the store when it was, and there was this big, huge, like, tower type cardboard thing. And all the models that had won that had gone to the photo shoot were there. And there was Barb in the chair. And so, of course, the manager, somebody walks over, can I help you? I'm like, well, 
no, not really, but this is my best wheel friend right here. Her name is Barb. And I tell the whole story. They're like, can I get a picture with you? And I'm like, sure, I'm not her, but I, yeah. um, I wanted pictures to send to you and to put on social media. Right. But then she was like, I want a picture. And then, yeah. So she started, the store manager started following Barb and me yes. and yeah. She's probably like, oh my gosh, this is Miss Wheelchair America. I know. Uh, no, no, it's more like I was Barb Zavani's friend. That's what that was. <laughs> I was just Barb Zavani's friend. Um, yeah, so that was super cool. And then tell everyone if they um, if they're listening to this now where they can find your photos online. Yeah. So right now, so if you are a tour customer, they send out daily emails, and you have to click on the emails. Um, you know, to get points, to get free money for free clothes. Mm -hmm. um, so they have been featuring us in the emails almost every day. Um, yesterday, actually, I was on their website right when you signed on. I was like front and center, really big, yeah. um, wearing the pink um, iridescent puffer jacket, which, um, you know, is a very Barb like thing. And that was so also cute. a cool thing. They like styled us with things that were kind of our style. Um, so I thought that was really cool too, that they styled us in a way that I would kind of typically possibly dress, you know, mm -hmm. like very yeah. close. It to was it. a little toned down for, for Barb, Barb fashion, but yeah, it, it was still <laughs> like, I, I feel like they would have been pieces I would have picked, but I would have might maybe styled it different, like with different mm -hmm. leggings right. or something, you know, yeah. but overall though, I feel like it was very, you know, um, but if you go to the website, um, and scroll down, for a little bit you'll see a group shot of us it'll say hashtag team torrid mm -hmm. and when you click on it there are um pictures of all of us and our profiles and stuff and then you click on the one of me and there's like questions and answers of things that i you know they asked me and i answered mm -hmm. and then there's like a little interview video that they have on there and everything at the top um and also so if yeah. it's like if you can't find it there, it, you probably have it on your social media. Tell yeah, people what, social, yeah, what, what's here. Yeah, my social media is The Rolling Rainbow. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, honestly, if you are a woman um, and you wear – well, not woman. I guess anyone, I should say. Because, uh, yeah. I mean, there's, yeah. there's it not, it's not necessarily women, I guess. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but if you are someone that wears size 10 to 30, mm -hmm. they kind of specialize in that size range. But there are people that do wear smaller sizes that, that can fit in some of their clothes also. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, check them out. They have mm -hmm. really cute clothes. Um, Tor got their start as a plus size Hot Topic. So there is more edgier stuff in there that you'll see. But there's also professional clothes, which is where I got all my professional clothes. So, um, but if you are looking for a pair of jeans that is accessible, that they are not custom tailored, um, their sky high skinny jean is literally the most accessible jean you will probably ever find because the, the waist is actually high enough, hence sky high that when you're sitting, your butt's not hanging out yeah. and they actually fit and they actually stay up. And they, I mean, I've seen other people say it works really well with their ostomy bags and, and other things like that. So, you know, cool. I really recommend that to That's everyone. Cool. That's a big deal. Cause like jeans are just, it's almost oh. like shoes for me. It's like, just, it's like the bane of my existence it's i i know like dealing with finding clothes as someone you know who's a non-ambulatory wheelchair yeah. user is a pain yeah um, but so i kind of you know, stick with like my style of sort of like yep. kind of <laughs> slim fitting so that it doesn't rub on the wheelchair i don't wear white i wear dresses and skirts so i can go use the bathroom most shoes fall off so i stick with boots like there's pretty much a there's a reason why behind behind my fashion for sure um, so let's fast forward, like what's, what's next for you in this realm? And then what are the, you have discovered some barriers, um, to being in like the modeling or acting industry yeah. as a person with a disability? Yeah. So, um, they have asked team tour to come back and model for 2022, um, randomly there's really no, 
So the first thing is, it's not like a consistent gig, if you will. Like, I can't say, oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to be working once a month and I'm definitely going to be earning this amount and I'm definitely going to be getting this much. Like, I cannot say that. Like, they might call me back, you know, next month and then I might not hear from them till September, you know, but like, you know, they're offering to pay us, which is great. Um, but, you know, several states don't have several barriers towards uh, employment. So if this was something that I would say is, um, you know, I would say trustworthy that like, I would feel comfortable, like, you know what, like, this is something I want to do and it's going to be consistent. And I like, yeah, stable, stable income. Yeah. Yeah. Like I could, you know, see that I, I would be like, okay, fine. Um, and I would think about leaving my insurance that I currently have. So like people, um, you know, with Medicare, Medicaid, you have to be under a certain amount to, of income a month to qualify for it. And if you go over that, you lose it. And as many people also know, um, Medicaid is the only insurance plan in the country that will include attendant services. So if you are someone such as myself and you live in a very non-accessible location, you need those attendant services for basic things like showering or eating um, because you can't access the kitchen. So you're, you're muted. You're muted. I was saying to hire someone out of pocket for that is extremely expensive. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and impossible for most people to afford. Exactly. So like, it's like, okay, well, you know, I'm paying someone else's salary then from my salary. Right. And how much sense does this really make to take a job? If I'm not one, it's not stable. It's not, I'm not able to, you know, know if it's going to be a constant thing. And I mean, I have other things I want to do with life, you know, so it definitely is a huge barrier. And I feel like that might be something contributing to the fact that we don't necessarily see ourselves often is that the system is set up to essentially oppress disabled people into poverty. And it's not that like, I don't care. You can take my SSI, SSD. I, like, I don't care about that. I care about the insurance. And I know that I'm probably not going to have an insurance plan as good as what I currently have anywhere else. And yeah, so the only reason I'm able to afford to be on a personal, be, be private insurance through my company is because I'm a, a para that luckily um, I can, I'm completely independent with my self care. That may not always be the case, but that's the only reason that I can afford to do that um, because I would be destitute. And you have an accessible house, like I built myself an accessible house. Right. Exactly. And, um, yeah. So, but that, that may not always, always be the case, but for so many people in our community, they literally can't function w without their care attendant. And, um, and they put such now I know Pennsylvania changed the legislation. You can make a lot more money now in Pennsylvania and not lose your care attendant services or your, there's, is that true? Well, there's a caveat to it. Um, so I, I've been like calling her. I'm like, you're the mother of Act 69. <laughs> so Dr. Josie Badger, who is a Miss Wheelchair America 2012, um, mm -hmm. she helped with this legislation and it's um, called Workers for success, um, workers with disabilities with job success. Um, and so it's expanding on the current workers with disability um, like model that we have in Pennsylvania. And right now it it's passed, but it's not going into effect because Pennsylvania is in a state of emergency. So they can't like change, I guess, things because of all these intricacies because of the state of emergency due to COVID. COVID and yeah. so, um, yeah, that it's kind of held up with that. But she told me that this part only goes into effect once someone holds a job for like a year. Well, how then, do you, how do you not grow broke in a year? Well, and that's why I was like, I'm confused. And she's like, well, we're working out those details of how like it's going to go into effect, but because of the state of emergency, things are kind of at a standstill. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested to see how it's going to go into effect, but essentially you can earn a lot more money, but you know, you would keep your Medicaid, but you would lose your Medicare. Okay. Well, that's kind of a big deal. 
Yeah. And I'm like, because that's a state thing. They can only control state and Medicare is federal. Yeah. Yeah. So like, why are we losing our Medicare? Like the whole thing is so bizarre to me. Um, And I just really think that people need to understand, like people are like, well, I have to pay my insurance. And it's like, yeah, but you are not using your insurance as much probably as someone such as us. Like we literally like in your instance with the whole, you know, bladder Bladder cancer, cancer. you have to go every three months now for a skin and all this. Right. Not not just that. I start, I start weekly treatments next week. I've had three procedures in the last five weeks. Like, are you kidding me? Like, and it's all because of you spinal cord injury and Mm caviar. So it's kind of like a, you know, listen, you may use your insurance. That's great. But like we use our insurance so we can like actually move our bodies from point A to point B because we need a wheelchair and insurance pays for a wheelchair. And you know, like all we have to keep up. And if we don't keep up with our health, then we cannot work. And therefore we have issues. And then we're a burden on that. We more so, right. I mean, so many of us, prefer to work to the best of our ability as many hours as we can. And, um, and then the, this way system set up, it's, it's, it, it totally backfires. Um, and it doesn't, um, I mean, what it accomplishes is keeping a lot of really amazing, smart people out of the workforce because yeah. we can't afford to work, <laughs> you know, yeah. I know you, if you are working with, as someone with a disability, you probably are coming from a place of some type of privilege, yeah. whether that's, you know, you have more ability, you have, you know, your, your family situation can help. Yeah, they help. You're, yeah. You're something to that sort. So mm-hmm. you know, that's something that I have definitely kind of realized with this whole thing is like, okay, like this is great. This is an opportunity. This is going to help propel, you know, bringing visibility to disability, which is my passion. But at the same time, this can affect me personally in these ways. Right, yeah. And how am I going to deal with that, this barrier? Yeah. And I'm still, you know, I have to call around, like there's like a PA health law project. I have to call them and they have to like, I have to explain to them the situation and they can tell me, you know, ways to essentially mm-hmm. make it work. And if the company will be willing to work by doing this, by working with an able account, by doing this, like, mm-hmm, and it's right. like how many companies are willing to do all this? Like some the- are, I mean, I will say with the whole push for diversity and inclusion and being part of disability and there've been lots of huge corporations who are attempting to really make it work and really make, really dig deep into reimbursement, flexible work hours and all that to try it so that we can hire more people with disabilities. Well, we're yeah. like a little bit past our 30 minute mark because Barb and I um, can talk for hours and hours and hours. Um, and we, we do. We were like literally in a car together for like 21 hours before yeah. and yeah. It, we talked the whole time. So. Yeah. Until, until I passed out so, because I was so of exhaustion, just to be clear. Um, I, um, I love you so much. I'm so proud of you. Um, you please go follow Barb, um, at the rolling rainbow on all forms of social media. And, um, she does amazing things and you can, um, see all of them there. And, um, yeah. And so, and then I'll, hopefully she and I will be seeing each other, um, for a little bit in January of 2022. So fingers crossed. Yeah. Nothing last happens. time we said that the world laughed at us. Oh, I know. I know. I hate, I'm knocking on wood right now. So <laughs> anyway. Them. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, um, I love you to bits and <laughs> thank you for re- representing the disability community so beautifully for using your voice. Um, you know, there's a lot of beautiful people in wheelchairs that, you know, and they share their beauty on social media and I appreciate that, but you take, um, you take it to the maximum level of advocacy that you probably can in all areas. Um, and I'm super proud to call you my best wheel friend. Oh, I'm proud of you, <laughs> my best wheel friend too. And oh. um, sometimes I feel like people may not like always appreciate my form of advocacy and not letting up. And I feel like a pit bull sometimes. But... And that's how, and I mean, that's how things get done. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. pretty much yeah. what I'm like. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. either going to love me or you're going to hate me. There's probably no in between. Oh, well. <laughs> Barb's a plot oh, he's on it. It's yeah. like you're like, oh boy. Good goodbye. Good. Goodbye to the haters. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I will see you again soon and um have a beautiful holiday season. You too. Bye. <laughs>